Good afternoon. We want to welcome you to the Foods for Thought seminar this afternoon. We're glad you have decided to do something about your health. You know, there are many unhealthy people in this world, and they don't do anything about it. But you're special because you have chosen to do something to make yourself feel better and also to think better and to act better. So I would like to ask you, how many of you know that a healthy lifestyle has a positive effect on your body and physical health? Raise your hand. That's right. Most of you know that. How many of you know that an unhealthy diet puts you at risk for many lifestyle diseases such as diabetes, high blood pressure, stroke, being overweight? That's right. You also know that. But did you know that now new research is showing that a healthy lifestyle also affects the functioning of your brain? As a matter of fact, this is a pretty new topic, and it, there's a lot of new research in this area. Dr. Gary Small from the Aging Institute at UCLA stated that just as unhealthy diets can lead to physical ailments like diabetes, heart disease, and obesity, those same T-bone steaks, curly fries, and ice cream sundaes can negatively and sometimes irreversibly damage our brain fitness, although the effects may take decades to appear. So what we are eating today, the choices we're making for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, whether we're eating a lot of fruits and vegetables or we're eating a lot of meat and saturated fats and cholesterol, this will affect the function of our brain in 10, 20 years to come. So you have in your hands the destiny of the way you're going to feel and the way you're going to think in the next 10, 20 years. The human brain is the most complicated structure ever investigated by science. Each time we learn something new, consciously or unconsciously, that experience changes the structure of our brain. New brain cells are formed, creating new memories. Some experiences such as stress, alcohol, disease can kill neurons or brain cells. Current research shows that new neurons or brain cells can develop even in adult brains. Our brains are built and changed by the experiences in our environment. So nutrition, lifestyle, and everyday choices can change the brain structure with us. Therefore, nutrition and lifestyle are very, very important because they affect our brain, how it functions, and also how we behave. Our brain is divided into several sections or lobes. Each lobe has a specific function. The frontal lobe is the center of judgment, reasoning, spirituality, morality, and the will. And these characteristics of spirituality, morality, and the will affect our character. Let's find out what can damage the frontal lobe. Of course, there are some things that we cannot do anything about, such as accidents, surgery, occupational injury, or trauma. But what about the damage that may result from an unhealthy lifestyle? The main cause of a compromised frontal lobe function are harmful lifestyle habits such as lack of exercise, stress, drinking alcohol, drinking too much coffee, and eating food that is unhealthy. Dr. Nedley, in his book, Depression, The Way Out, states that the effects of lifestyle and nutrition on our frontal lobe are more important than their effects on heart disease, cancer, osteoporosis, kidney failure, and all other degenerative diseases combined. We need to make it, therefore, our top priority to protect our brain because our quality of life originates here. So this is a very, very important statement. The way we eat affects our brain more 
than all of the other diseases, such as heart disease, cancer, osteoporosis, and high blood pressure. So our brain is very, very easily compromised if we have an unhealthy diet. So healthy nutrition and lifestyle choices will protect the health of my brain and my frontal lobe. And a healthy frontal lobe will help me to take charge of my life and make the right choices. So one thing affects the other. Now we would like to speak a little bit about fiber and the effect fiber has on lifestyle diseases and the brain. One easy way to get excellent foods for your brain is to re and reduce the complications of lifestyle diseases is to eat dietary fiber. Fiber has many advantages for your brain, but we, before we talk about fiber, let us talk a little bit about fiber history. In the 1970s, fiber became a household word with Dr. Dennis Burkett, a renowned British physician who proposed that fiber can prevent many diseases. Through his work in Africa, Dr. Burkett observed that the diets of the uh, African people included large amounts of fiber and that many degenerative diseases common in the Western world today were not common there. So he found out that these were some of the diseases that were associated with a low fiber diet, that were protected with a low fiber diet. Let's look at the diseases that are associated with a low fiber diet. People who have a low fiber diet get diabetes, constipation, appendicitis, varicose veins, hiatal hernia, diverticular disease, hemorrhoids, bowel cancer, bowel polyps, heart disease, strokes, gallbladder disease. These are all the diseases that are associated with a low fiber diet. Dr. Burkett noted that people started getting these diseases in England and the United States after the 1890s. Does anyone remember what happened as far as inventions were concerned in the 1890s? What was invented? Well, that's when the new milling techniques uh, were used to remove fiber and, and the germ from whole grain uh, from whole wheat and, and whole grains. And this is when white flour was being produced in the United States and in England. And therefore, this is when these diseases also started with the use of these processed foods. So Dr. Burkett proposed that the fiber's health benefits came from its ability to increase stool bulk and speed up the movement of food from the beginning to the end. So let's talk about fiber now. What is fi dietary fiber? Fiber is a type of carbohydrate found in fruits, vegetables, grains, nuts, and legumes. It is an indigestible carbohydrate that just passes through the body. Let's look where can we get the fiber in our diet. You can notice that whole grains have fiber. You can notice also that fruits have a lot of fiber. Vegetables are good sources of fiber, and beans are some of the most excellent sources of fiber, getting anywhere from 10 to up to 19 grams of fiber per cup of beans, depending on the type. But as you look in the lower right-hand corner, eggs have zero grams of fiber, meat has no fiber, neither does milk, cheese, or any dairy products. There are two types of fiber that come in our diet. One of them is soluble fiber. It is a gel-like substance that acts like cement in plants and dissolves in water, and it slowly, as the move, food moves through our intestinal tract, it slows down its travel through the intestines and slows out, down the blood sugar from rising rapidly. Then we have insoluble fiber, which is made of plant cell walls, insoluble. It's insoluble in water, it's not digestible, and it prevents constipation and other bowel diseases. Let's look, what are the sources of 
soluble fiber in the diet. As you can see here, we have apples, we have strawberries, any kind of berries, blueberries, blackberries, nuts are good sources of fiber, pears, also legumes, your beans, your lentils, and your split peas are excellent sources of soluble fiber. Then we have insoluble fiber, and this type of fiber is found mostly in your whole grain breads and cereals. Barley and wheat bran, brown rice, couscous, bulgur wheat, nuts, seeds, carrots, cucumbers, zucchini, celery, and tomatoes. Those are some of the types of insoluble fiber sources. Why is fiber such a big deal? Let's talk about the specific benefits of a high fiber diet. Fiber is excellent for weight control. You know, in this country, 64% of the population is overweight. 300,000 people die each year from being overweight or obese. By middle age, most of us have accumulated some love handles around our waist. <laughs> And, you know, even increasing 5 or 10 pounds above your ideal body weight, you're at greater risk of high blood pressure, diabetes. And these illnesses increase our risk of mini strokes. And these mini strokes, they um, can lead to decrease in memory, dementia, and Alzheimer's. So the most effective way to lose weight is to eat less calories and exercise. May I have the slide before this? Go one back. Yes. So what does fiber do? It slows down the movement of food through the intestines. It increases satiety. It makes us feel full. And it decreases hunger, especially for high fat and high sugar foods. And, we, and so the good thing to do with every meal, you want to start your meal with high fiber foods. Start with your raw salads or raw fruits when you're having breakfast, for example, beans and um, whole grains, so that the more concentrated foods that are high in fat and protein, you leave those for later so that you have nicely filled up your stomach with the high bulky foods and then there's a less, uh, less of a chance to overeat. Fiber controls diabetes. You know, a high fiber diet may be just what the doctor ordered to get your blood sugar under control. And keeping our blood sugar under control is very important for all of us, even if you don't have diabetes. Because the best time to prevent diabetes is before it happens. And so if you do have diabetes, this could be a great way to keep it under control. They did a study, and they found that soluble fiber reduces blood sugar and insulin in non-diabetic overweight men and women. So even if you are non-diabetic, your blood sugar is reduced by soluble fibers, and that's a good thing. Um, eating just two extra servings of whole grains, like 100% whole wheat bread or um, whole grain cereals, decreased uh, type 2 diabetes by 21%. One small change made such a big difference. Now imagine if you were to do this for a whole lifetime or for 10 years or 5 years, what a big difference that would make. Next slide, please. Oh, go back one. Increasing fiber prevents long-term complications from diabetes. The soluble fiber significantly decreases blood sugar. Fiber decreases insulin requirements in type 2 diabetics. If you have ever had to uh, give yourself insulin shots, you would really appreciate to know that by eating a high fiber diet, you can decrease the amount of insulin 
And I've had patients who started following the diet, they were able to get off of insulin by using high fiber foods. Now, let's review which are uh, soluble fibers that are good for lowering your blood sugar. Strawberries, blueberries, legumes, beans, what else? How about from this side? <laughs> what are soluble fibers? Remember what was the first one there? Oats. Oatmeal is very good. And beans and berries and apples and pears. Those are the soluble fibers. Let's talk about heart disease. You know, in the United States, coronary heart disease is the leading cause of death for both men and women. And it's caused by a buildup of cholesterol plaque in the coronary arteries. Cholesterol causes the arteries to become hard and stiff. So if we were to sit down for a consultation, I would tell you that one of the best things, besides lowering your saturated fats or hard fats, would be to protect yourself from heart disease is to eat a high fiber diet. Many studies show that strong evidence that a high fiber diet protects from heart disease. This uh, famous study done at Harvard of 40,000 health professionals showed a 40% risk of the reduction of coronary heart disease with a high fiber diet versus people who took a low fiber diet. Another very large study done in California of 31,000 Seventh-day Adventists showed a 44% reduced risk of non-fatal coronary heart disease, a 11% reduced risk of fatal coronary heart disease by eating whole wheat bread instead of white bread. Is that difficult to do? It's a very easy thing to do, to switch from white bread to whole wheat bread. So adding oat bran and bean fiber to a low-fat diet decreased blood cholesterol from 8 to 26%. Another good thing that fiber does for our body, it reduces our risk of getting sick. It improves our immunity. Fiber-rich foods are rich in vitamins and minerals rich in phytochemicals and antioxidants, and we will talk about those later in another lecture. Another wonderful property of fiber is that it binds toxic substances. It dilutes, binds, inactivates, and removes toxic substances from our colon, and this helps to prevent colon cancer and may help other cancers. The longer the food is in our stomach, the more likely, if it has toxins, it can cause damage to our body, but fiber just kind of moves it very rapidly. You know, we spend thousands of dollars on laxatives. Next slide. Next, forward. But there's a very simple solution. Soluble fiber holds on to water. It softens our stool. It decreases the time it takes for our food to move through our digestive tract from the beginning to the end. It helps prevent constipation and cures chronic diarrhea. I need a volunteer who can come here and help us with a little demonstration. Who would like to be a volunteer? Two volunteers? Okay, let's get two volunteers. Here's one. Let's have a lady. Okay, you want to come up? Have you ever wondered how long is your digestive tract? Okay, let's see how long it is. If we can untangle it here. Okay, go this way. Go this way. Okay. You know how long that is? 
23 to 26 feet, depending on how tall you are. So this is why we need lots of fiber to push the food through our intestines. Of course, it's nicely curled up in our abdominal tract, but we need lots of fiber for that. Okay, thank you so much. So, fiber is excellent for bowel disorders, like prevention of diverticulosis. Diverticulosis are these little pockets that form on the colon of people who are having problems with their bowels. Diverticulitis is an inflammation of these pockets. And hemorrhoids, irritable bowel syndrome, all of these are prevented if you eat lots of fiber in your diet. And fiber enhances brain function. It pr provides essential carbohydrates for our brain. It releases nutrients that are very important for the structure and function and chemistry of our brain. So in summary, to reduce your risk of disease and improve your brain function, you want to eat more whole foods like we have here as they come from nature. How much fiber should we eat? For optimal health, the average adult needs 30 to 50 grams of fiber a day. Do you know how much we're getting? It says here we're getting 5 to 14 grams a day. So we're very, very low in our fiber intake. So what about children? For children, we take a child's age and we add 5 grams, and this gives us how many grams? For a 10-year-old, that would be 15 grams of fiber per day. Let's look at some foods that are rich in fiber. Whole grains, you want to use brown rice instead of white rice. Whole grain cereals, whole wheat bread, whole wheat pasta. Bran, one cup of bran flakes is seven grams of fiber. Fruit, one serving of fruit is five to 10 grams of fiber. Asian pears are really rich in fiber. A three inch fruit has 10 grams of fiber. And it's very, very delicious. It's very sweet. It's the best natural dessert you can have. Next. Vegetables have anywhere from four to nine grams of fiber. Our, a medium artichoke is six and a half grams of fiber. One cup of artichoke hearts, 14 grams of fiber. And then Brussels sprouts have seven grams of fiber and only 60 calories. Legumes are very rich in fiber. The humble bean, which includes soybeans, chickpeas, lentils, and peas, are chock full of nutritious fiber. The big winner is the navy bean with 19.8 grams of fiber per cup. And quinoa, how many of you have heard of quinoa? Yes, I have some of these grains up front so you can look at them for yourself. Quinoa is an excellent type of grain. One cup has 10 grams of fiber, and it has 8 grams of protein. And this is a good substitute for rice, because rice is low in protein. This has much more uh, fiber than rice. Rice has 3.5 cups of, 3.5 grams of fiber per cup. So you're getting almost three times as much with your quinoa. And then nuts are excellent heart health, healthy food high in calories, but also have some fiber. A quarter cup of almonds is four grams of fiber, but 200 calories. Helpful fiber hints. It's very important if you're starting out with your fiber to start slowly. And you don't want to Get, go home and get all excited and start packing fiber into your food immediately, okay? You want to do it very gradually. For example, if you're eating only one fruit a day, you want to add two fruit a day. And if you're eating only one vegetable a day, have two vegetables a day. And do that for a few days, four or five days, then increase one more vegetable. And 
add a cup of beans every day or half a cup of beans. And so little by little, you increase your fiber. Now, I'm going to give you a really fun ex assignment. Uh, in your handouts, there's a handout that says fiber content of foods. And you have the fiber content for fruits, vegetables, and legumes. I would like you to go home for two or three days, do a food diary, write down everything you eat, and figure out how many grams of fiber you're taking in. And then get an average of the three days. And then what you can do is, you, let's say you, you're getting only 15 grams of fiber a day, then you can know, OK, I'm going to increase it by five grams, or I'm going to increase it by six or seven grams. So you can gradually work your way up until you come to the point of uh, getting enough fiber. And you don't have to be counting, but it's good to have this little handout to have an idea of how much fiber you have and how much you need. The other important thing is that you make sure you're drinking at least eight glasses of water per day. If you eat all this fiber and you dr don't drink the water, you're going to have the problem you're trying to avoid, and that's constipation. So you want to drink lots of water. Now we want to do some practical ideas. How are we going to increase our fiber in our diet? Okay, we want to go for the whole grains, the whole wheat flour,